Um, so talk to me, this incident that you guys responded to yesterday, can we start with um, the legalities of it? Why is it legal? All of that. Sure. Uh, according to North Dakota Century Code, an individual can possess a handgun so long as that is in, it is in plain view and it's unloaded or secured. Now the key terms there are unloaded or secured and plain view. So when we're talking about plain view, it means that the weapon is discernible by a passerby. For it to be concealed, it doesn't need to be totally hidden. It just needs to be recognizable by somebody who would be walking by observing that person with that gun. The, the other terms, unloaded, means that there is not a live round in the chamber of the weapon. And uh, secured would mean either locked or in a case, a carrying case, where the weapon is, uh, say, secured in your trunk or in some sort of uh, box designed to hold that firearm. So yesterday, this was in plain view, and that's legal. Yeah, it was in plain view, and the weapon was unloaded, which in the state of North Dakota, unless you're prohibited from owning a firearm, or there's, there's other... Uh, laws or regulations that prohibit certain people from owning firearms. If you don't meet any of those restrictions, any North Dakota citizen can be in possession of a handgun, as long as it's unloaded and secured. So in, it's different when you cross the river, right? It has to be concealed? Uh, no. Can't be in plain view? Well, in, once you cross state lines, the laws uh, differ and it would differ depending on what state you're going to and also what you're doing with that gun. And we would recommend that everybody or anybody who has questions or concerns about possessing a firearm or carrying a firearm, they would uh, check with the laws within the state that they live in and also the laws for the state that they're traveling to. So in North Dakota, if you go to the North Dakota Attorney General website, all this information is provided to you, um, but there is a lot of information there. So we would highly recommend that anybody who's intending on carrying a firearm uh, really research the topic because there is a lot there and it varies greatly depending on if you're open carrying, which is what the individual was doing yesterday, or if you are pursuing a concealed weapons permit. Uh, there's a whole different criteria of laws that apply to that. And then also if you're carrying under the North Dakota constitutional carry law, which allows for North Dakota citizens to carry weapons concealed if they meet those legal requirements as well. You still have to have paperwork to prove all of those three things you just talked about, correct? Correct, yeah. And the, the big thing for the North Dakota constitutional concealed carry is a North Dakota driver's license, a valid North Dakota driver's license or ID card and making sure that you've had that for at least one year. So I could have, under the North Dakota Constitutional conce Concealed Carry, I could have a gun right now? Yes, as long as you were not otherwise prohibited from owning a firearm and you're a North Dakota resident for one year and you have a valid ID card with you, then yes. Could I open carry though, like this gentleman was yesterday? Yes, you could do that too, as long as the firearm is unloaded, uh, plainly discernible by a passerby. Which means? Which means that it's worn on the outside of the clothing, it's worn in a belt holster, it's worn in a fashion that anybody walking by would clearly be able to see that it's a, a firearm. And then it's either unloaded or secured in a case or with a, a gun lock or some other type of device. Okay. So in this situation yesterday, when you guys get called to this gentleman, do you guys then have to check if it's unloaded or does he show you? Like, how does that, because that's obviously kind of a heightened situation. Yeah, we would, we would make contact with the individual carrying the firearm uh, because there was a reason why we were called. And, and that's where this gets a little tricky because uh, we want to make sure that nobody is out there trying to purposely cause a disturbance or put people in fear of serious bodily injury or death by the use of that firearm. Uh, any sort of behavior that intentionally harasses or annoys or alarms the public is something that we would respond to and try to figure out. Um, the, the criminal intent to 
cause a disturbance, cause alarm, put people in fear for their life or against the risk of serious bodily injury, now we would be talking about criminal charges that would apply. But so that was not the case last night. That was not the case last night. Uh, last night we made contact with the individual and everything checked out, so we were okay. Okay. What would have had to happen, you kind of just touched on a few things, but is there anything else that would have had to happen where this would have crossed the line and it's no longer legal? The left firearm would have had to be loaded, that's not yeah. allowed. Yeah, yep, if, if the gun was loaded, uh, if the individual was otherwise prohibited from owning a firearm or possessing a firearm, or if based on his behavior he was causing some sort of disturbance, he was causing alarm or putting people in fear for their life or using that weapon to potentially threaten somebody, uh, that, would, that would turn it into a criminal matter that we would handle a little bit differently. So I know that this man has at least been called in one other time to the Fargo Police Department about basically the exact same situation, almost the exact same location, um, and maybe it might happen again, I'm not sure. What can people do, or like should people not be alarmed, should people not call Fargo Police about this? What's your kind of take on that? No, uh, your own personal safety is, is paramount. So. If you're in a situation where you observe somebody carrying a firearm, we don't expect the citizens to make that determination whether or not this individual is carrying a firearm legally or if he's in violation of the law. And we certainly wouldn't expect the citizens to try and resolve any sort of situation there. Uh, we would highly recommend that you call the Fargo Police Department right away if you feel there's cause to, to call us. If you're concerned about safety or if you're concerned that somebody might potentially be violating the, the weapons laws in North Dakota, definitely give us a call and, and tell us what you see and what you know and, and we can kind of take it from there. Yeah. Um, this was also a question that I saw on your Facebook page as well as ours. Um, the attire he was in, like ballistics, that obviously has people extra alerted. That's also not illegal. Correct. Yep. Not illegal at all. Um, and unless they're causing some, side or some sort of disturbance where people are intentionally harassed, alarmed, uh, put in fear for their life or their safety, um, then people are allowed to dress however they see fit. So This is a unique situation. I mean, a park, uh, it's, it's all legal. It's just all very hair raising. Lots of neighbors are kind of on edge today. Um, is there anything besides kind of the spiel that you just went on uh, that you could kind of comfort them with or anything more they can do? Sure. Yep. Uh, be aware of your surroundings. Take a positive role in your personal safety. Um, nobody is more responsible for their own safety than that actual person. So uh, just keep an eye out. Make sure you're aware of what's going on around you. You know, more often than not, we go through our lives staring at our cell phones, worried about work or what's going on at home. Um, just be in the moment and, and be aware of what's going on around you and act accordingly if you see something that's concerning. Try and remove yourself from a situation. Try and uh, contact law enforcement right away if you feel it's necessary. Um, just taking those simple steps of being aware of what's around you is going to go a long way to ensure your personal safety. This is up and down um, the bike path. Well, actually, rewind. Is there any reason that people should be alarmed of this man? I know that he's allowed to carry, so obviously he's not a convicted felon or anything like that. Is there anything that you can ease people's minds on on this specific gentleman? We're not naming him. I don't know him. Yeah, and unfortunately, I don't either. I wasn't uh, one of the officers who responded to that incident, and I don't have a lot of information on this person specifically, so uh, I can't speak to that. Um, yeah. Okay. Is there anything else? firearm-wise, handling it, having it on your person that people should be aware about or anything else you can shed some light on? Sure, yeah, we, we would strongly recommend if you are somebody who is considering carrying a weapon for your own personal safety or uh, doing anything firearms related, that you would take some training. And there's a lot of options out there. There's a lot of people that do this for a living and, and train people with firearms, uh, firearm safety, and training goes a long way for, for people who are planning on carrying a firearm or utilizing it for, for one reason or another. So uh, we would highly recommend that you 
enroll in some sort of class and, and make sure you know the, the firearm that you're carrying. Mm -hmm. We know it's legal. It's every, he was in his rights. People are going to watch this. They're going to now be aware of this. Is it annoying if this happens again next week, two weeks from now, a month from now, that they call Fargo police? Should they, now that they know all of this, should they not call Fargo police next time they see this man and maybe they're still alarmed? Not necessarily. We would never recommend that people not contact the police department if they feel it's necessary. Um, law enforcement work is, we're never going to consider it annoying when people try and give us information or call us because they're concerned. We're always willing to take those calls.